Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Inside Line Podcast with your host, Dr. Daniel Cameron. In tonight's podcast, Dr. Cameron will be discussing a statement that was published by the American Autonomic Society discussing long COVID and POTS. So good evening, Dr. Cameron. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for leading the discussion, Darlene. Um, do you want to tell us first a little bit about um, about POTS? So uh, they were talking in this article about POTS as part of long COVID. So just to put it in context, they did a pretty good description of what is long COVID anyway. So I'm going to go through that list, but it, it's a very familiar list because it's a lot of the things that people with Lyme disease complain about. So just imagine this, if somebody comes in with long COVID with this list of symptoms, uh, breathlessness, uh, palpitations. You know, we know about breathlessness from uh, people who have babesia, palpitations from those who have uh, POTS, chest discomfort. Uh, we know that uh, fatigue, pain, cognitive impairment, which they're calling brain fog. Sleep issues, uh, peripheral neuropathy, that is the pins and needles, there's numbness, abdominal discomfort, nausea, because you know how many Lyme patients have unexplained abdominal pain, nausea, and um, in related to autonomic issues. They also had muscle pains, anxiety, depression, and we know how many people Lyme have uh, neuropsych issues, uh, headaches, ear aches, and tinnitus. So it gives you an idea that long COVID and the list of symptoms for Lyme are, are very similar. So these people with POTS that are talked about in this article just happen to have a broad range of other issues that they're dealing with. This article focuses on the POTS part of the long COVID. Yeah, this woman was, um, um, had symptoms after a, an acute COVID infection. And then three to four weeks later, she started having uh, that familiar set of symptoms, fatigue, orthostatic issues, palpitations, chest pain, lightheadedness, headaches, and presyncope. So that list of symptoms we know as POTS, uh, they're calling it POTS also related to COVID. And they put um, her on a tilt table. So instead of having somebody just sit stand up, lie down, checking the blood pressure and pulse, they can, uh, with the use of a tilt table, uh, essentially tilt you and see what happens in, work, in a more controlled fashion with uh, your blood pressure and pulse. And certainly that was a part of her story. And uh, they're addressing um, how you might diagnose POTS and how you might treat the POTS part of long COVID. They didn't really discuss whether they, they were gonna be treating the other symptoms, whether there was anything for the remaining symptoms. And the treatment involved a um, particular type of heart rate lowering medication? There's a, a medicine that's brand name is called Corlinor. Uh, it's Iberbrandine is the generic name. Now, people with POTS, and Lyme have a hard time getting this drug. Uh, it's a, it requires pre-approval, um, it requires a tilt table, and, and often requires a, somebody with the expertise in POTS to get this drug. It's a drug that lowers the heart rate um, and inhibits the cardiac pacemaker current. And so the hope is if you can control the heart rate, control the blood pressure response that you can get rid of some of those symptoms. Now, later on in, the, in that blog that I'm referring to, uh, I review a couple of drugs we're pretty familiar with in the Lyme disease community. Uh, Midodrin is a alpha adrenergic agonist and uh, it, can, it can certainly uh, be um, helpful in uh, some people with Lyme who have autonomic issues. And, and fluidocortisone is a synthetic adrenal steroid um, that's been used. And so uh, they, but in this case is that they were able to uh, get uh, authorizations for colander 
and uh, they didn't really uh, address uh, did it help. But uh, uh, I know in my practice that uh, the autonomic issues, uh, the POTS can be quite difficult. Um, POTS is, is referring to postural orthostatic tachycardic syndrome. So it's related to posture. Orthostatic means change in position and tachycardic uh, syndrome. Now, the not all POTS uh, patients are created equal. When I had a, uh, a speaker uh, that I was listening to from Texas, um, there's no stereotypical where everybody has the same pulse response, same blood pressure response. And so there's quite a bit of variety if you're a, a POTS doctor. I also find that uh, with my Lyme patients, if I can get rid of the infection, it becomes easier to manage POTS. So I do have to say that the POTS issues in my Lyme patients are much more uh, dramatic in kids, uh, adolescents, and some young adults. It's a present probably in older, but it's but it's a, it can be a dominant issue and a problem for, uh, for uh, somebody with, uh, with Lyme disease. And I first got to know POTS well with someone who, um, an, an adolescent who came uh, in with his father and uh, couldn't get off the floor. So uh, it, it was only when we started treating for Lyme that he was able to get back on his feet gradually and he was able to uh, play rugby eventually. So he uh, got his dream back of being an athlete. And you say couldn't get off the floor. You mean his, his balance was, was off or? He got lightheaded and uh, he didn't really have the typical vertigo or um, dizziness that you would get. He was just lightheaded and he'd have this uh, uncomfortable feeling, fatigue, uh, you know, stomach troubles. And uh, he just, uh, um, found that uh, he couldn't uh, function. He, his brain was working, so as long as he stayed on the floor, he was a, he was confident enough in his um, in his life that he could go to school. He just was on the floor and his uh, crawling to the next room, and his friends would uh, his friends would carry his books for him. Wow! And so, but fortunately, uh, he was able to get up a pillow, and eventually sit and. Uh, the treatment for Lyme is uh, what I was doing, but it, it was certainly pretty, pretty difficult for that kid. And I find that uh, a lot of uh, adolescents are struggling with uh, this problem. And if they could only solve that problem, they would be, you know, the brain's working, other things are working, they could work through the fog, but they can't work through POTS very well. Now the authors mention um, motor and sensory axonal neuropathy. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about what that is or? Well, we know a little bit about axonal neuropathy. You know, ax, uh, axon is a part of the, the nerve, the long nerve. So in Lyme, we call it small fiber neuropathy. Um, and that's, uh, that leads to IVIG sometimes. It can be pretty frustrating. But um, in the field of POTS, they have other names, you know, so other jargon. So one of the ones in the blog is called acute motor and sensory axonal neuropathy. So by the way, is that 1990, when I first uh, read about Lyme uh, from the New England Journal of Medicine, they were, um, the Gigian and, and colleagues were talking about sensory neuropathy. So that was 1990. Now we're dealing with uh, uh, 30, uh, over 30 years uh, later, um, there's a, the issue of uh, axonal neuropathy issues, and they're seeing it in the POTS population. They also had something called acute demyelinating inflammatory polyneuropathy, and which I mean, it's acute, it's demyelinating, and it's inflammatory. And so it just seems to show up in COVID and be an autonomic dysfunction. So hate to throw around too many terms other than uh, it's surprising how much overlap there is with what I see in Lyme patients and what they're seeing in long COVID patients with uh, uh, autonomic dysfunction. Well, I, I thought I'd uh, mention uh, this concern that the author uh, raised, which is there aren't many physicians experienced in treating POTS. If you want to go to a POTS doctor, 
the author said it might be six months or longer. And so over time, people who treat Lyme are getting more and more familiar with POTS. They have the POTS uh, issues that patients come up with. And so uh, uh, in our area, there's a few cardiologists who have taken on POTS. So you see more of them will discuss it early on instead of only cholesterol, heart of the arteries. Uh, you'd be surprised how often uh, um, some of the cardiologists are recognizing it. They may you know, not be um, up to where we want to be, but nobody is. It's just that uh, don't be afraid to discuss POTS concerns with uh, your cardiologist. And, uh, and if you're working with someone who has uh, been working with Lyme disease, don't be afraid to mention POTS and discuss POTS. Well, thank you, Dr. Cameron, for, for talking about this topic. And um, hopefully be, there'll be some more growing awareness about POTS and, and education on the, on the, uh, the condition. So thank you again for joining us. And if everybody would like to learn more uh, on this, than this blog in particular and other blogs that address POTS in Lyme disease patients, um, you can do that at danielcameronmd.com. Thank you, Darlene. Good night.